Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. I decided that what I would do is I'll manually just take out this little kink bit up here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and do the short work the other side of the big stone over there and then once we've done that we can set it going again on the long runs and hopefully that will then be able to go and do all the rest of this field without too much difficulty. At least that's what I'm hoping. That 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 is the master plan here. Whether or not this master plan is going to work is entirely another thing. Uh, so we'll bring you over there. I did want to see if it would go up to the stone and go past, or whether it was just going to like turn round in front of the stone. Um, I'm not all that concerned about whether it does or it doesn't. But what I think I will do is go over here and just like cut out a little bit on this corner down here. Where it's most likely to go and leave a piece anyway. So if I do a little bit of a slice right off of there like that. And just sort of tidy that. There we go, like that. Uh... That looks a lot neater over there, and it's, it's less likely to cause us any trouble later. So now what I want to do is I want to bring you down to about this point, and then I'm going to set the hired help going from here. So I'm just going to press H right there. Let that hired help go on up through there, and it should go straight like normal hired help right across the middle of the field like that. What direction it's going to turn next, I don't know. Depends how much it would ready over the other side, whether it had like done a complete turn. So it may, it, it could go either way. It's going that way. Right. Okay, fine. I will run it round myself and I will go up over this side and I'll bring it over to here. And I'll run it along the side there like that. But then if I go H on here. Actually, that's fine. That's fine doing it like that. That one, that one can go there. And it will run along that side of it. And hopefully it will work this short run here. I just want... I, if we get these short bits out of the way, the rest of the field should, in theory, be able to all be done in one go. We will keep a slight eye on it for what it... You haven't completed anything. You sit upon a throne of lies. I don't know how you could do that. Right. Uh, let's bring you round over this way and try that again then. Um, yeah, it's whether once it sort of comes up through, if it goes all the way to the very end of the field over there, or if it leaves a strip all the way up through once it's done the, the bits the other side of the stone. I don't really know how it's going to cope with that. We'll get to that. We will find that out. This one is going to go here, and he's going to turn around. So he's, he's got no problem here. It's on that bit. Uh, we should now just be able to leave it go and let it carry on with that. I've got nothing that I want to do with you at the moment, so the only job that I actually want to go and get on with at the moment is this. I've got... Uh, what have I got? I've got one full load to take from the pigs over here, and then we had emptied out most of the cattle pens in the last episode. Let's have a look at what the actual numbers are. Uh, I've got in the cattle pen now manure, I've got 14,000 litres in there. So we haven't got very much. And we've only got four more cows to go, and then this will be completely full, the cattle pen. I'm not going to go selling cows. Like I've done with the sheep, I sold off 10% of the sheep, I sold off 25 of them. Uh, I won't be doing that with the cows. We will leave the cows as they are. I won't make any changes there. Now, this is going to be a bit more difficult... Because I can't get this one over as easily as I could with the cow. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm now going to go over and get the um, the thingy-majig over this side. Go and get this one. Get that ready and lined up. See, it's already started putting more manure in there from the cows. They do provide an awful lot. I mean, 200 cows will provide an awful lot more than 300 pigs. Because the, the pigs, that they're... they're about half the size of the cows, maybe a 
little bit smaller than that. It does depend on which pigs, admittedly. Some pigs are quite large. Some are, are not anywhere near as, as big as the cows would be. It, so it depends entirely on what animals you've got there. We are going slowly here. It takes a long time for it to turn round any corners. I'm, I'm sort of thinking maybe I should do this manually. Maybe I should try and do this just manually, just this little bit right here. It, it, it's not going to take very long. And that will speed it up a bit. And then I can set it going on the longer runs and have the hired help back on doing that. Which will hopefully, in theory, then uh, allow us to finish this field just a little bit faster. It's, it's oops, well, I, I didn't really want to go and do that. But um, what's done is done. Um... Yeah, I like. I, I don't want to spend too long trying to do this. So we want to get this planting finished, and then we can move on to our next jobs. We've got many more jobs that we want to do. There are many, many more things that we wish to get done, and we're not going to be able to get them done at this rate. Right? It's. It's. We're just going to be sat here waiting for this, and that gets tedious and dull, and we don't really want to do that. I tell you one thing that I could do. Is if I went and get the herbicide, put that on, put the sprayer on, I could go and do the field down the bottom. I will have to do it manually, but I mean, going around the outside edge of the field, I do that manually anyway. So that's nothing particularly new or different or difficult. Right, I want to go to, yeah, you're facing in the correct direction like that, so then I can go like this. And you set off across the field like that. Doing an absolutely grand and wonderful job. Okay, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. That can stay there and keep doing that. Uh, you, we will ignore that. We'll go back to doing this bit over here first. So let's start you up and... I'll lower that one down and fire it up. And then we can go into here and we can start loading some of this. So we have in that trailer... How much does go in that trailer? Is it 45,000 litres in the trailer? I think there was 55,000 litres in this pen right here. That there is, there is quite a lot of manure in this pen right in here. Helper B has completed their task. No, you haven't completed anything. Let's go back over to you. You haven't completed anything at all. It's because I had it set facing in the other direction, I think. So it, it didn't like it. Had it facing the wrong... You know, I'm just going to put it there and, and set it going again and then leave it. Hopefully it will figure itself out. Ho hopefully it will figure out everything that it needs to do. Let's start you up again and, and keep you running. So that one there, I'll, I'll back out down over to you. You know, I'm going to back over. I'm going to go over this way a little bit more so that we get just a tiny bit more of the, the overall heap of manure that we've got in here. There, uh, it's just going to sort of... There we go. It takes away all of it then. It takes away the corner of it. I can shove that forward there and just have that riding up over the top of the heap that we've got left. Which won't take much. There. There's the trailer full. We've got that one completely full now. There's still a little bit left in here. I'm, I'm going to take everything else that we've got in here as well. So I'm going to leave that one there. I'm going to unhitch it. Then I'm going to go and get this trailer. We'll go and empty it out. We'll sell it. And then we will empty out the rest of the stuff that we've got in here with the pigs. And then once we've done that, we can take the remaining stuff that we've got over there with the cows and we'll load it into this trailer i won't sell it i will wait until we've got full trailer loads because uh, that is something that we said early on was it's full trailer loads or no trailer loads um the exception being grain when they would come up for a half one and a half trailer loads like or or, or below a, a set point for a second trailer load so within 10 percent of full for a second trailer load but not just one but anyway manure is going to be full trailer loads only because there's, there's not a lot that we're getting from this are we so the merchant isn't going to be making much money out of this either not unless he's managed to persuade someone that this is actually gold dust and so we're getting the short end of the stick at just two grand a load, and then he's selling it down in the valley for $100,000 a load, which 
fair play to him. I mean, that's, that's, that's a pretty good sort of um, con that he's got going there. You, you've got to be impressed with that kind of activity. This one has now gone all the way up to the other end of the field and turned round correctly and now come back down again. So he's doing everything that we want him to do, which is good. You over here fire you up again and let's go and get another load so it's not going to be a full load for this last little bit there'll be some but not a full load now i am cu i can't remember now if i spread fertilizer on that field over there before or after i did the drilling on that field i think i did it before but i don't actually remember so we're going to need to go over to that field and check with the fertilizer. Plus, well, see, the fertilizer, I'm going to leave that. I think I will do the weed killer first because it acts as a preventative. It's, and while there's nothing grown, I can spread the stuff on the field with relative ease. I'm, I'm actually able to go and do that without any problems at all. It's only once the stuff has, once the first growth stage has come along and hit us, that it becomes more difficult to do it manually, because you can't see where you've gone with the sprayer, whereas I can see it if I do it before that point. Right, let's empty out every single last little bit that's in here with the pigs. There we go. That job is now done. Right. I'll turn that one off. Back out round here. I could fast forward time a little bit, I suppose. But no, that's going to mess up our planting. So we, we don't want to go doing anything like that. We've got 10,000 litres in here at the moment. We're not going to get a full trailer load because we don't have uh, uh, 35,000 litres over here with the cows. But we've got some. So we can just put in everything into the trailer. I, I'd like to have empty manure uh, silos here. I, I think that would be very cool if we could just empty them out completely. That is one job completely done then. I, that's, I, I figured that would be quite an, a, a nice thing to have there. Just just a, another little thing to have under our belt. Uh, why it doesn't like lowering this one down at all, does it? Every time I go to lower it down, it, it just really, really doesn't like it. It puts up a lot of resistance to trying to lower this thing down. And you go in there like that. That is almost full. I can bring you round there. There's the, the last little bits. Right, that, that is everything in here now. That is all completely done. So I'm going to bring you back to the very outside edge like that. Shut you off and uh, unhitch you right there. Trailer is about half full. I'm just going to hitch in a second and see how much is actually in that trailer. It will. We will just leave it there. I'm not going to go and sell this last little bit. Despite the fact that I wouldn't mind taking the total to over 40,000, but no. So we're 20,000 litres short on that. I'm thinking we, it wouldn't hurt to go and do some more straw in for the cows. We can put some in for the pigs at the same time. If you look down here... Straw is a bit low in the pigs, and then cows, yeah, we could do with a decent bit of straw going into there as well. So let's go up this way and double check on progress here. You are doing just fine at the moment. That being said, I think field work is still the more important thing. So I'm going to do field work rather than other work. So I want to get the... I'm going to do spraying first. Before we worry about... Because fertilizer, that can just go on. That that doesn't, like... That doesn't get affected by anything. So as I'm going to be doing the spraying, I'm going to put the front weight on to balance out the machine. Because otherwise we're going to be um, sort of sitting up and begging with the sprayer on the back. It does put an awful lot of weight onto the tractor. I know that weight is possibly a little bit heavy... But there is also, once that herbicide sprayer is filled up, there's a lot of weight in that one as well. So I don't really want to be leaving it with, um, like, no, uh, no counterbalance on there. Because it, it really does interfere with the steering a lot on these tractors. If, if, if you've got, like, all that weight in the back, 
it really does make it wiggle and bounce an awful lot. So let's bring you over here. It looks like I've actually done fertilizer on there after I did the last lot of... Uh, after I did the planting. It does look... It's, it's looking like it there. It's a darker shade. If you, look, if you compare the two and the fields over there, you compare those two, I think that we did do fertilizer. So I've got to wait for the first growth stage before I can do anything there. So let's load this one up here. Like that. And then I will come over here and I will start this one spraying from this corner. The problem with this is that it doesn't leave any marks out on the field as to where it is. So we may end up having to use GPS to do this. Except I can't use GPS because I don't have GPS on this tractor. Let me just unfold and we will see. I'm hoping that it will change the colour of the ground when we go putting this spray out onto the field. That's what I'm hoping. And then I'll be able to see where I've been. All right, that's that's going to be the, the biggest challenge here is and we cannot see where we've been at all with this because we have already put fertilizer on the field and so this is this is going this is going to be a serious challenge especially as I don't have any GPS. All right. Well, I will I'm I'm going to try and do this. I am going to try and do this. It won't let me do it with the hired help. I don't have GPS. So my options are a bit more limited. I could actually get GPS on this one. So I could set a GPS course on here. The GPS mod is a fairly straightforward one to go and use. Um, so it, it is one that I say is acceptable. And the great thing about GPS is that it is available on the mod hub. The... Uh, AI vehicle extension is not on the mod hub, I thought it was, but there is a link to it on my Discord. You can go onto Google and you can search AI vehicle extension and search GitHub, G-I-T-H-U-B, one word, search GitHub. That is where the original one is being worked on. Now, GitHub is basically, it's a collaborative um, website that people can work on projects and different people can upload different parts of the project and then it is available for everybody to take it down from there. That's the best place to get it from. You will get the most up-to-date version from GitHub. Um, it might be a little bit confusing on there as to how you go about downloading the, the mod correctly from there, um, pulling out all the files and that. If you're confused about how it should work join my discord there's a link to another video in the description down below for discord and then the discord link is on that video it's easy, easy enough just just follow the links um and someone on the discord will be able to point you in the right direction of how to download something off of github um there's a lot of people on there who use github on a regular basis so you can post a question in there and it will get answered. Just take a look around the Discord and there's some um, places for asking stuff about uh, the technical help for Farming Simulator 19. We've got a channel specially dedicated to that. Um, so there, there are people there who know what they're talking about. Far more than I do. Right, we've got some very talented people that uh, give up their free time to help us out on the Discord, which is absolutely fantastic. They are the unsung heroes of the channel. They are absolutely the unsung heroes. There's, there's quite a few people that spend a lot of time on there, helping everybody out with various different um, issues and conundrums and so on. And they do an absolutely fantastic job of it. Now, I'm looking up there... Thing. It looks like they've actually gone all the way across the field how I want them to. So I'm just going to keep a half an eye on it up there now. Because he's gone all the way over to that. Actually, we're going to go over to that end of the field right now. So I'm just going to stop that one. We've, we've gone most of the way around here. And I'm going to go up to you. You're turning around at the moment. This end seems all right. I'm going to do that a second. I'm going to go back to soil composition. And they're going the full length. And they haven't missed any strips over there either. So it does look like that is going to be just fine. We're going to have no issues on that field at all. It will just keep going. So this one here can keep going around the outside edge. And then I might just decide to drive over and get the... I'm wondering if I can do this without getting the, the GPS. Or I can do this without relying on such things as GPS. Can I... 
eyeball this in well enough. Highly unlikely, I would say. I, I don't think I have the skill to eyeball this in correctly, but I could give it a go. I could definitely give it a go. I mean, GPS is kind of the norm these days. Everybody has GPS on their tractors. They retrofit GPS for a relatively cheap amount of money. Um, not much different to having it as the option on a new tractor. Is the, I, I'm, I'm, led to un, I'm led to believe that there are some new tractors where it's not even considered an option anymore. It just comes as standard. And you would have to specifically state that you didn't want GPS. And I don't even know, some tractors, I don't even know if it's possible to get them without GPS. Right? It's just built into the tractor. So, um, yeah, G GPS has sort of become an integral part of farming these days. It does make you wonder that if something drastic happens and all satellites fall out the sky, how are people going to cope? Although, to be honest, I think that if all the satellites fall out of the sky and we're on that level of catastrophe, um, I think GPS working on your tractor is going to be the least of your concerns at the time. I think there will be other slightly more pressing issues, such as why are all the satellites falling out of the sky and, and, and things like that. Uh, I think we can go a little bit further away from there. Not very much. We could if we had a droplet system. You sort of, you, you leave droplets off to the side. And people have talked about using droplets before. And how they, they really don't like them. Like, you, as you drive along, you leave, you have a little foam droplet that gets left off the end of the boom. And that's what is essentially your width marker as you're driving up and down the field. And I've heard people talking about using them on older sprayers. And... Talking about how much they despise the things. It's not easy using a droplet marker and, and sort of guessing exactly where it goes. Because you think about the distances involved when you're looking out your window and, and trying to sort of um, figure out exactly where those droplets are and, and in relation to your tractor. It's, they're a long way apart. Now, I see that last strip, I don't know if I was over, for, uh, uh, over too far. I think I may have been over a little bit too far. Right up the end of the field, I think we're all right. I think we went right the way in there without any trouble, but I don't know how far up that went. So we're just going to sort of keep going at this angle like this till I get all the way up through. What I am going to do is I'm going to go over to the tank in a minute and I'm going to refill the herbicide. Another thing we're going to have to do is we're going to need to spray the big field as well with herbicide at some point. Right, let's turn that one off. And I'll fold up. Helper J is blocked by an object. Ah. Right, yeah, there's a good big stone in its way. We move around the big stone like this. We, we just move out of the way of the good big stone. And we come up over this way. I'm going to put you down about there, I think. Something like that. And away we go. There. Right. Fan schmastic. Let's put that one going up through there. Does not get any better than this, I think. Does not get any better than this. That's running perfectly all the way through. So we've got... I've got to put fertilizer on this field up here. I can't do any more fertilizer on that one until we've had a growth stage. And this one is going to need herbicide up here. That's going to take a while. It's going to be a little while before we're ready to go and do that. So let's go to you. I've folded you up now. I can go and refill with herbicide. And then I can keep doing this little bit that I'm doing down here. I think this is a good thing, actually. Getting some of this done now... That means that we've got a better chance of being able to get everything done later and in a timely fashion. Because I will have already done part of the herbicide spraying. That, that will be one less job that I've got to worry about um, for the rest of my tasks. Right, I think maybe about here, possibly on a little bit further. We'll... There, right. Let's, let's start up there. I think I'm still too close, but I'm okay with that. I'd rather have a little bit of overlap and just make sure that we've got the job done correctly. I reckon that I'm still going to end up missing bits. I don't know if... I don't think I've gone too... Well, maybe I have gone too far. Maybe I've drifted over a little bit too far. I reckon that we're going to end up with little tiny lines of weeds here and there around this field once it, it comes to grow again. 
Once those weeds do end up growing through, that's what we're going to have. We're going to have little tiny lines of weeds growing everywhere. Let's bring you back over this side like this and start there. Like that. See here, I think I'm a bit too close. The distance there, and then you look at half that distance there, and then that. Yeah. Maybe a fraction too close on there, but... The spe it's, be it's better to have the overlap than it is to have stripes of weeds. I, I think that's going to look dreadfully untidy if we have stripes of weeds everywhere. Our neighbours are going to be highly critical of us. Not that we've actually got much in the way of neighbours. There's a few people that work over in the lumber mill over there. But other than those few people that work over in that mill, there isn't really a lot of other people around, are there? That's, that's the, the glory of this place, is the lack of neighbours. That's, that's one of the, the, the um, redeeming features about this place, is that we don't have neighbours around. And that's, that's what I love about it. I mean, look. Do you see any neighbours? Do you see anybody who's going to complain if you turn your radio up nice and loud at four o'clock in the morning? Do you see anybody that's going to make a ridiculous and horrible noise outside your door at half past five in the morning when you finally decided to turn your radio off and decide that it's actually sleep time? And then they've decided that they want to get up and go to work or something equally obscene. I see none of the above. I see nothing but just empty space and no people. And I, I, I like this. I think this is a, a wonderful thing to see. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm quite pleased with the fact that we've got very few neighbours. But there are people around. There are people that occasionally travel through. And any one of these people may see... Lines of weeds in our fields, and they will judge us. They will judge us harshly and severely for having those lines of weeds in the field. They will say to themselves, what kind of slob of a farmer works here? This is absolutely disgusting. I would be ashamed of this. And naturally, I will blame it on my hired help rather than accept responsibility for it myself because, you know, I'm, I'm a good boss like that. Um... But, at the same time, I don't really want to be put into that position where I've got to go and blame my workers. Right? I, I'd, I'd rather not blame anybody at all. I'd rather not have that situation come up. So we will do our best not to leave any lines of weeds anywhere. Let's start spraying there. And I think that's about right, sort of running down at that angle there all the way through. I mean, technically, we should be running the same direction that we did the seed drilling and trying to go roughly where we would have left out the tram lines. Although this is the US. You don't leave tram lines in your fields, do you? Not in the US. Um, you, you do it differently over there, don't you? Um, so there shouldn't really, in theory, be any tram lines. So it doesn't matter if we're going the same direction as the, the crops or not. Well, I don't think you do. Let me know in the comments section. U.S. and uh, U.S. and Canadian, and also Australian, because you do a similar type of agriculture there. Um, farmers, do you put tram lines in? Do you do you leave out a line of crops every so often, every so many passes with the seed drill, in order to leave a, an unplanted row for the sprayer to drive in? Um, without sort of squashing the plants. Because that's what we do here in the UK and large chunks of Europe. You have lines all up and down your fields where the tram lines are. That's where the sprayer drives up and down. But do you do that? Is, is that done anywhere in the US, Canada, Australia? Other, any other places that do very extensive form of agriculture rather than the really intensive forms that we use? Um, I don't think you do. I don't think you do. I don't recall seeing um, tram lines in any of the, the pictures and videos and stuff that I've seen of farming in your countries. But I could be wrong. I may actually be wrong. Just It does occasionally happen. It, it, you know, I, I don't like it to happen very much, but it does occasionally happen. That sea drill up there is doing a rather wonderful job. He seems to be coming along quite quickly now. We've gone past, we've sort of done the bulk of the field up there. Right, that is another row done here. There is a very good chance that we will finish the drilling in tomorrow's episode at this rate. We've just about reached the end of today's episode. I was hoping that I could finish doing the spraying 
before we actually finish up today's episode. I've got this pass to do down across here, although I think I'm being a little bit generous with the reach here. So we're going to have a strip all the way down through here just because I'm spreading it out a bit more in the hope that I can finish all of the job before we leave. So <laughs> that's probably not the way to do it. That's, that's probably not the best way to do this at all. But anyway, there we go with our sprayer. We have just about finished this job and we've done it manually across the entire field and we did it all in one episode. We will find out once the weeds start growing through whether or not I did a good job of this or not. I've got a sneaky suspicion that I haven't done that great a job of it. I will be honest with you. I feel that there may be a few bits that I've got to go back over and do again. Um, but for now, we've done all right, I feel. I, I, I don't think I've done too bad a job going down through there. But anyway, I have run out of time for today's episode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive this one back. I'm going to reload it with herbicide. And then it will be ready for doing the big field. And possibly if there's any particularly large strips that I've gone and missed in this field in here, uh, we will do a bit more in there. I can't do fertilizer spreading until we've had a growth stage on the crop. So that will have to wait. Um, this one will not. This one we can lower down here. Like that. I can load. Oop, no. I can load it up. Lower it down there. Right. And I can unhitch it. That one can stop there a minute. So fert I could do fertilizer on that field over there after we finish doing the seed drilling. But that's not quite ready yet. Anyway, we've run out of time. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.